Now I would say, it's without a doubt that computer-edged machinery is the future of our manufacturing and if we want to be part of that, or have our kids or grandkids be part of that, then we have to embrace this kind of thing. Now luckily, an awful lot of people are doing exactly that. These things, 3D printers, they're appearing everywhere, in schools, in factories, in homes, and they are giving us an advantage. You used to have a huge workshop, you'd need a foundry, a mill, a lathe, a drill in order to produce something that you can produce on this in your home office. So there's a kind of liberation there, and very much in the same way that Midian computers worked for garage bands in the 80s. It is a very freeing technology for creativity in the home if you change some of your workshop practices and make this one of those essential workshop items. Of course they're great, but they have the limitations. I mean, one of the things they're good at is double curvature. That is, where you get a curve going one way, when you get a curve going the other way, at the same time. And a sphere is an example of that. For large, flat areas, then, I would say they're not so great. They have a tendency for warping. But, of course, if you combined it with something like a laser cutter, I would argue that you have the core of a modern workshop. And the next tool, simply this, it's their P2 laser cutter. It's a CO2 laser cutter. And we're going to get it out of the box and have a look at it. Because with those two tools that can fit in an office, in a garage, you can make, well, just about anything. From prototypes and models to actual products you could sell to things that you could mould up and send off to somewhere that does have a huge workshop. And you don't need to acquire those skills because those skills that come from working with this translate easily to working with a 3D printer and vice versa. So what we're going to do is get this out of the box and have a look at it because Xtool sent me this to do exactly that. And to be honest, I'm really excited because those two machines, I think, will complete my home workshop in this new tradition. Okay, what a beautiful looking machine. Now, just to tell you, the packaging was awesome, very robust, and of course this is glass, and we've got a metal case here that we don't want dented, so certainly the packaging is good for the machine. And there it is, out of the box. Now, I warn you, it is heavy. It weighs 45 kilos, so it's a bit of a struggle by yourself, I can assure you. So get two men to help you one move it around. And that weight, of course, speaks of quality of manufacture and anything that's moving. Basically, the heavier it is, the more stable it is. Now, typical of Xtool, the design is really beautiful, actually. It's a very beautiful machine, and if you read through the spec sheets, it's got some very impressive specs. It's a 55-watt CO2 laser that is supposed to cut through 20 millimeters of acrylic and 18 millimeters of wood in a single pass. Of course, we're going to try that and see, of course, but that's what they say. And the working area is uh, 23.6 inches by 12 inches, I believe. I'll have to check on that, but the work area is uh, pretty substantial, and it does have a feed-through mechanism as an accessory, so you can extend that if you want. So, Lots of things to think about when using a machine like this, but let's get the rest of it set up. The setup of the machine is easy enough, if a little awkward. To start with, there's a screw at the bottom here that you want to do to pull out this drawer, remove the package material, slide it back in and screw it back in. Sounds simple enough, but that screw is a little bit awkward to line up so that it actually goes in. Then, on this here, for transportation, there are a couple of wing nuts either side you need to undo and remove the restraining bolts so that you can actually make that move. Then you have six screws at the back here that are a little tabbed, you remove those, and then four at the back giving you access to the tube so that you can fill it with antifreeze. In order to do that, they provide you with this handy little tool, it's a dual tool, screw over one end, hex the other that fits all the bolts. It also comes with a kit of parts, a few goodies and the tools that you need to do the job. Now uh, this was quite firmly attached. I had to persuade it loose with the edge of the screwdriver even though I'm taking the nuts out, so I was a little bit worried about that. Now the only truly, truly essential thing to remember with the CO2 laser is don't forget to add the coolant. And the coolant is nothing more than deionized water, the kind of stuff you put in household irons. 
And it also supplies some antifreeze that you're supposed to add. You add the antifreeze depending on a table of what you expect the temperatures to be. Now I live in the south of the UK, so it never really drops below zero. Even so, I'm going to do the minus 10 to zero on the antifreeze mix and fill it up. And you fill it up again according to the table. Once you took the first lot in, turn the machine on, watch it slosh around, turn the machine off, and add the second batch to take it to its coolant level. Then, of course, you can put the back cover on. Now, that bit is a bit of a faff on, but you only have to do it once. So, I suppose, what the hey, just get on with it and do it. Now, I appreciate that there's a real whistle-stop tour on how to get it up and running, and there's a reason for that. It comes with this guide, which is basically a comic book picture step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to set it up. It's as foolproof as you can make it, I think, and it includes everything, including that table that I was burbling on about earlier. Xtool have also done their own video on setting it up, and I'll put a link to that in the description. And it's probably about a million other videos on how to set it up. All we've done is go through it, so you've seen me do it, and I can tell you it took about 20 minutes, and it was an absolute breeze. Once you get to this stage, of course, you've got to link it. And the first linking is always done on a computer. Plug in the USB cable, go to Xtool software, and download the XCS. It will link with it, and you can do the setup and do the optical path, follow the screen directions, which again are stupidly easy. I followed it to do a correction on this, took, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes. So, in total, about 35 minutes to get it up and running because Xtool are adopting that same philosophy that you're finding in 3D printing, and that is ease of use out of the box. Because um, I think really two reasons people shy away from this. One is the fear of it, and the second one is the price of it. I mean, this is about £4,000, which is fairly expensive for a home budget, but fairly cheap for this kind of laser. But the ease of use has been a real issue because these things were sold for ages. And you, you paid your money, you got your thing, you got some clunky software with it and a wave goodbye, good luck. And, and it took you quite a lot of learning to get to use it. You had uh, cooling systems, you had ventilation systems, and you had the machine itself. It was quite a challenge, to be honest. Everything here is in the box. The ease of use has been a huge issue for them, and they've done an awful lot to sort out that ease of use, because it took me no time at all to get up and going to be able to cut something out with this new laser. And when you look at it and feel the build, then you're thinking of, maybe, it's like the bamboo lamps of the um, laser cutter world. And that's no mad thing. It's a nice piece of equipment. I've reviewed other reviews and people who have done reports on this after using it for a year, and they're all very positive. There's a couple of things that are possibly a negative, and I would say that that's the front screen. It doesn't have an actual front screen. It's just got this next to useless menu with a start button. So maybe Etico could look at putting something on a screen and maybe look at storage. Because there is no local storage with this. Everything you're going to do, you're either going to send by Wi-Fi, you set the Wi-Fi up, or plug in your computer and send it by computer. Unlike a 3D printer, which normally has local storage, this doesn't. And I think that's a bit of a drawback, to be honest. But even so, it has done an awesome lot to move lasers into that out-of-the-box experience, and I'm not surprised by Xtool. Xtool started using diode lasers, that was their first product they offered, the open frame one that sat on your desktop. Then they started doing enclosures, and this is their first foray into CO2 lasers, and it's a good job. In the region of this set, you're looking at things like um, Glowforge and Guayke as being the main competitors, and for that, it certainly competes very handsomely in that field for the price that we're looking at, because these things they are essentially much of a muchness. It runs at about 600 millimeters per second, but so do they all. It cuts uh, really quite rapidly on certain materials and fast on its uh, engraving on other materials. But it's not so much the machine that dictates that, it's the actual material. So if you put too much heat into acrylic, say, all you'll actually do is melt it. And as the beam goes through, that melt will re-stick. So you have to 
push the beam through so that it actually cuts it and just doesn't melt it and re-stick it. And so the material itself is a limitation as opposed to the machine. The real wins for Extor have been um, that out-of-the-box ease of use, the undoubted quality of construction, and then the third thing is the support network. Because this um, XCS that they're putting forward as their development base, as the base to actually run this and use this machine, is actually a nice piece of software. And again, when I ran the optical path, the guidance was well, phenomenally easy to follow, and it made the whole job ridiculously easy. But there's a lot of people using that XCS, and a lot of people contributing to the community of it, and of course, the company themselves are very much in support of it and doing an awfully good job. It reminds me, actually, of what Arduino did when they first set up the Arduino, and all of the software backup that you get now with Arduino, courtesy of Arduino. XTOR are positioning themselves very much in that framework, and that's a very sensible decision, really, to support the community and the tool itself is going to give them, I think, a market domination because they're very supportive, and that's what you really need from something like this. You need the ease of use, out-of-the-box experience, and a supportive network around you so you can get the best use out of it. And if you're buying a cheaper version of this, what you get basically is uh, the machine and a wave goodbye, good luck with it, and you just struggle by yourself. With the support network, you've got something that you can rely on, and that can be a real issue. Of course, it is a laser, and that means it's burning things, including your eyes if you happen to look into it. And of course, all the open frame designs come with a set of goggles to protect you. And then they protect you, but it won't protect somebody who randomly walks in off the street to find out what you're up to. Equally, because it's burning, there's gonna be fumes. In an open frame, those fumes just go into wherever you happen to be standing, so you get a jolly good lung full of the stuff. It's why enclosures have become so popular, because of course, in an enclosed space, you get the opportunity to vent it out, which is exactly what the X-Tool does. It has a vent, you've got a little tube with it, and at the bare minimum you can stick it out of a window so it's going where you're not. Equally, you can get the HEPA filter kit that will remove all those nasty bits and pieces that you would otherwise be breathing in. And in terms of the laser safety itself, the lid on the X-Tool locks it. Uh, locks while you're lasing and stays locked for a period of time, which you can set, its default is 5 seconds, but a period of time to vent everything out before you lift that lid. And that's kind of impressive that they're concerned with the safety. But they haven't stopped there. Now, I'm not new to lasers. I've had several of them, actually, including the old K30 that I bought from China. I had a Glyke cloud and I've had a couple of open frame desktop diode lasers. And I did manage to set the K30 on fire. E equally, I burnt my arm actually with the laser while setting the optical path. But I managed to set the thing on fire and Luke noticed it and we had to run up with a couple of fire extinguishers. My X tool, it arrived with this thing, which is a fire safety kit. It's actually an automatic detector system, including a CO2-based fire extinguisher, and this goes on the back of the machine. On the back of the machine, there's a mysterious-looking connector and a mysterious-looking hole, and what it does is ticks the fire safety kit. And here it is out of the box. There's the fire extinguisher itself. We've got the gas bottles that go with it. Here's the collection of bits and pieces, the connection cable and the tube to connect the extinguisher to the laser, power supply and the smart hub and the sensors. And you install all of this into it and you have yourself a built-in fire extinguisher. So the smart switch is for um, turning it off, turns the machine off if it detects a fire, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm not going to do a video on installing the fire kit because Xtool have done an awesome video on installing the fire safety kit, and I'll put a link to that video if anybody's interested in the description below. And for me, that really speaks a lot about Xtool. They've, the community they've got, the support that they've got, is actually one of the key points because as I said before, I've had lasers before, and the reason they haven't found their way into my workflow is 
they've been a bit clunky and there's been a steep learning curve and they've not really performed as they should perform in terms of XTool with that out-of-the-box ease of use community support experience which certainly from my first views of it seems to be there then they've ironed out a lot of those issues that have kept laser cutters in the shadows as far as I'm concerned. These, these things have been sold a lot uh, as a standalone piece of equipment for building a business around. And there are lots of people who have done that and made successful businesses. But that's not my use case. Um, I do an awful lot of prototyping. And one thing that's not seen on the videos is how much background work is involved in prototyping something. Because you, you always make mistakes and you don't know until you've printed it and something doesn't quite fit. So you've got to go back to your design and then reprint it until it fits. So there's a degree of iteration that goes on that I'm expecting the X tool to speed up because I'll be able to use much cheaper materials just to make sure that everything actually fits and lines up before I do a 3D print. And then as I said at the beginning of the video, different tools are good for different jobs. So complex curvatures, 3D printing, large flat surfaces, things like cradles and boxes that you put stuff into, use the X tool for it. So I have high expectations of this particular machine and I've really enjoyed having a look at it and thinking about doing that and now we've got to get on and do that because it's been quite a long video already so the next video will be where I actually start looking at and doing a project with the X tool and then try and combine it with the actual 3D printing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.